Hello, King's a &E. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window and ultimately what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. It looks awful, doesn't it? Does it hurt if you poke it? Yeah. Why the hell did we decide to go clubbing on Sunday night? It's my hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> my little finger. That is pretty swollen. My other finger hurts as well, the bloody one. Yeah. But not as much. Why did it go bloody? I don't know. Is it your blood? Yeah. Yes, it is. Because I was going, oh, it was squirting out. Really? What was that? After it happened. Oh. You were too busy being sick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rita's. The on call room is going to be on the second floor. Um, we're all going to chip in so we can get like a, a big TV and oh, an espresso really? machine and things like that. <laughs> oh my God. Five is waiting for a side room, medical. Shortness of breath. Why? Because he's got diarrhea. In the morning, when I get up at home, cup of tea. In the evening, if I'm at home, cup of tea. But for some reason, at work, coffee. <laughs> Where are you going? Why have you got money out? It's going to be the coffee, Joey. All right, listen, I didn't fight my way to the top of the food chain to go and get the coffees, mate. I think you just, you just want that extra bit of energy, don't you, to keep your brain sharp. Postcard FRS 91, SC elevation on the ECG, then he arrested. He's now got a GCS of three. I knew when I was doing my training, a and &E was where I was going to work from my first a &E placement as a student. It's the pace. I remember the point when I decided to come back to work after I had Louis, and I was, um, I was sitting at the local church hall at a parent and toddler group. I remember sitting next to this mum, and she must have gone on for 20 minutes about her new fridge freezer. And I remember sitting there thinking, I've got to go back to work. Things ain't it. Yeah. Ten minutes, trauma call. Hems red phone, ten minutes. Hems red phone, ten minutes. Fema fracture so crossed between the river barge yeah, and the river bank. Yeah. A 19 year old crushed by a river baby. It's my fault for saying, should we get a coffee? Right. Wasn't it? Okay, lovely. Jinx stuff. Okay. We've got a Hems call coming in, a 19 year old trapped by a barge with pelvic and femoral fractures. Can I have an ED doctor to reach us for the Hems red phone, please? Thank you. When we get a Hems case, that's primarily because of trauma. And usually they are dispatched to the more serious trauma cases. So automatically you're on a bit more of an alert because you think, well, it's it's a major trauma case, but it might be potentially more serious. So we need to get there sharpish, get the team ready, delegate roles for them, and we have a sort of little plan. The 
helicopter emergency team has flown in from Guildford in Surrey. But can you do a B assessment for me and then get the gloves? A 19-year-old man has been crushed between a canal barge and a bridge. It's taken the team 55 minutes to extract him from the scene of the accident. Their bit of the job is very important. They have to get the patient to us alive. The key is to get to us as quickly as possible. Worst case scenario, you know, someone's been crushed. You know, they could have amputations, they could have internal bleeding. That's the thing. They could have literally anything destroyed or damaged within them. You just don't know until you see them. Nice and stable, guys. We're just moving them across slowly. How are you doing? Yeah, so, you know, that scratch ball. We have the bed at the bottom. Yeah. 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 With injuries probably being a femur on the left, query pelvis, and he's got two to three puncture wounds on his thighs. But I haven't seen him move his legs in any state. Hang on, GCS 15 on arrival. He's had 240 of ketamine in increments and two of midazolam with four of ondansetron. He's been packaged for spinal proportions and a pelvic splint on. Um, Hi, Josh. Hi. Josh, can you hear me? Yes, please, go ahead. Open your eyes for us. Josh, Sister I know your pelvis is sore. Josh? Yes, fine. We need to know that you can open your eyes, OK? About six on pupils. Because the team are so good at assessing, I will know within seconds how serious the case is. He is shivering. He is cold peripherally. He has a good radial pulse. We've got numbers on the screen. Want me to continue? Uh... We've got trachea central. No soft tissue injuries to anterior neck. No, no, no. Is, is it GCS 15, do you think? No, really no. not. Is that because of the No, but he's kind of drowsy, but open his eyes will comments. Pupils are fine, equal, and reactive. Okay. The area of his bruising where he had and the area of his trauma, I was primarily concerned about a pelvic fracture. To see. Um, we've just had a HEMS patient arrive. It's a 19 year old gentleman who was trapped. Um, he works on a barge. He was trapped between the barge and a bridge. Um, he clinically has lower abdominal, pelvic, and femoral injuries. It's, so it's just because of the mechanism, I was hoping to get a, a head to pelvis CT on him, please. When you have multiple fractures of your pelvis, then you can bleed a lot. You can lose several litres of blood and be unstable because of that. So you, people can die from pelvic fractures. We've got two lines. Just drawing so out 10 and 10 of Lovely. Really and if we can just whip the bloods off so that we've got those before we go to CT, please. If we can get, just get spare us to feel the abdomen. He's a trauma fellow. Oh. Feeling any pain here? Can we get him all packaged for CT, please, guys? They need to rock and roll. It's more than 90 minutes since Josh's accident, and his pain relief is starting to wear off. Yeah. Oh. Scream, shout, swear, cry. Don't with it, just oh. come ah. Give him some more pain. Yeah. When a sort of grown man is screaming in pain, the doctors are thinking about life threatening injuries, and you are as well, but the nurse is usually the one that will say, can we sort this patient's pain out? How much analgesia did he have? He's quite out of it on the ketamine, but he's still in pain, so he needs something different, away. doesn't he? Do you want fencing and all oh, knocked yeah. up? Yeah. Right, CT already. Lovely. OK, I'll just get this in. We're, we're scanning head to pelvis, then obviously we need to do femurs at some point. Can you pull a bit? Yes, well done. I was basically working from home. I had a call come in. They explained then that there'd been an accident involving Josh. As soon as you hear airlifted and crushed by a barge, you think, oh, sort of worst nightmare for, you know, a dad, mum. I just remember the next thing, I was in the bathroom and Lee came in. He said to me, Josh has been in an accident, and he said it's his pelvis. 
And then I just burst into tears. Ready to brace? Yeah. And Lee just said, we've got to go now. Okay, and I remember we sat in silence for the whole journey. Okay, just I was trying the manly thing, I suppose, I don't know, didn't want to cry or whatever it is, but uh, just uh, she was upset. I think we both thought that you might be paralysed. Because when you get told that he's got severe pelvic injuries, it's what you think, isn't it? Sweets. This is the first day that my uniform isn't giving me pressure sores. Because <laughs> you're so tight. You're eating too much. I mean, last week my, my colleague was calling me Kimmy Three Bellies because it was like one, two, three. It was awful. What well, if my foot is broken? Then I'll have to have like plaster casts and crutches. And then I can sign it. After a night out clubbing, 21 year old Liam has a sore finger and his friend Nicola has a sore foot. What I don't understand about hospitals is people come here who are obviously in pain and upset, so the drinks and food should be really cheap. Yeah. Oh, no. You see how much a pack of mini cheddar's are. Do it. Seventy p Most things are 70 p but there's some fruit nibbles. £1.20. Oh, my God. So it's cheaper to get fat than it is to get thin. Yeah. OK, on the count of three, one, two, three. OK. okay. Right there. We just do some scans, OK? Just keep yourself nice and still whilst we do these, OK? It's now two hours since Josh's accident. Firaz is concerned about injuries to his pelvis and spine. He's basically from under a bridge, so he got wedged between the barge and the bridge, yeah. There was an extraction time of about 60, 70 minutes. So he's, he's been like this for a while. He's possibly got some sort of spinal injury, and I don't know where that level would be. Yeah, but... No, he's just an average 19, 20-year-old. His mates come round. They enjoy going for drinks down at the pub, you know, going out with his girlfriend. He has always been really athletic. He always wanted to weight train and pursue that type of thing. And again, that's what his dad does. So he kind of follows in his father's footsteps. He's always, always wanted to be a carpenter and then an apprenticeship came up with the National Trust. He works on the waterways, doing all sorts of repair works. So we were really, really proud of him for that. You did well, OK? We've still got some more x-rays to do. We'll explain everything in more detail once you're a bit more awake, cos we had to give you some drugs. OK. Ready? OK, one, two, three. The minute we found out, all I thought was, he's on his own. I'm not with him, I need to be with him. That's where I need to be, I should be with him. I'm his mum, I should be with him. You know, if they see a mum or a dad or a girlfriend or a wife, that helps them a hell of a lot. You know, cos when, when, you're, when you're in stressful situations, what do you want? Well, you just want a loved one next to you. That's what I would want. Yeah, 
We'll pop a gown on you, wire you up to this monitor, and we'll go from there, all right? She's been seen by three GPs this week, all have diagnosed anemia and done nothing. 80-year-old Jean has terminal cancer. She's been brought to King's by ambulance after collapsing at home. Very pale. Okay. She's got a history of CA breast, which has metastasized to her in bone. Jean? Wakey, wakey. Hi, I'm Dr. Harrison. I'm one of the doctors here. Are you in any pain at the moment? No. No pain at all. Can I just have a very quick listen to your chest? Oh, I don't want me to pull my legs up. No, you're all right, my darling. All done. All done. Just some deep breaths for me. Fine. Let me just pop a line in your arm and take some bloods now, and I'll just quickly check your haemoglobin level. How have you been feeling in yourself then over the last week? Terrible. I feel so terrible, I know I'm going to die. The main thing is when I get up, for any reason, yep. I feel so ill. The cancer got into my leg. OK. And um, they can't really do much about it. No. OK. I'm just going to quickly go and check that blood test, OK? And I'll come back and I'll examine you. All right. Look at me. Beautiful. Look at me. You look gorgeous. Don't you Talk worry about, about that. Scruff. Oh, absolutely not. You're not feeling well. You're allowed to look a little scruffy. Oh, God, I felt so ill this week. I'm such a worry to everyone, and I'm oh. like, you know, I won't let my husband do things, and he yeah. gets cross. He's right always. Well, I'll try and get you a bit more comfy, all right? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's all right, my darling. Just try and get some rest, okay? Yeah. Oh, my grandson came to see me today. How old is he? He's 25. Yeah. Bought me a big bunch of flowers. Oh, lovely. So sweet. That's nice. It's lovely when somebody thinks, well, you like yeah. that. How many grandchildren have you got? Four. Four. Lovely. Yeah. OK. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. I'm well tired. Really? Mm. I think I'm finally starting to sober up. <laughs> <laughs> I met Nicola eight or nine years ago. Everyone calls us Tweedledee and Tweedledum. She understands me and I understand her, so we get on really, really well. She goes and buys me heels. She buys me makeup for Christmas and stuff. She helps me do my makeup, chooses my dress. <gasps> what if they give me crutches? I love crutches. But I not, won't be able to hold my handbag and crutch at the same time. Yeah, because you can put, because you crutch like that, the bit that you hold, you put your handbag on the end. Oh, is that what it's for? No, but oh. improvise. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I was knee high, I've always got the girl toys and the Happy Meals. My mum on my seventh birthday bought me I'm um, dressing up shoes, high heels. And I've always had Barbies, Furbies. And then it was about when I was about 12, when I was going through puberty, that I really noticed that something was wrong. Girls were growing in a certain way and I wasn't. And then it all kicked in that I'm in the wrong body. My problem is... Yeah? My husband's going to see me as a boy. Like, you're not transitioning. I got love, I was in A&E. I'm not going to do my makeup yeah. and hair, just go to A&E. Yeah. Three years now, I've been living half as a woman, half as a man. And in the last, back in October, I decided I want to live as a woman full time. Plenty warm. Are you? Aren't those, ambul aren't those accident ambulances terrible to ride in? I sounded very old. Sounded it... as if the doors were going to fall off. You 
don't get big white ambulances taking you if you've called. They were very efficient and helpful and knew exactly what they, they were doing. They always are, aren't they, John? Yes. They knew exactly how to do it, how to get you down, out. Mind you, it's a terrifying experience being carried down those stairs in a little tiny chair, isn't it? We've been together a long time. We met at school, actually. She was in the girls' school and I was in the boys' and we didn't meet at all. There was no intermingling, and except there was this dance, and we met there. It was my last day at school, actually. I was, I think, 18 at the time, and she must have been 17 then. So that's how we met. She was the prettiest girl there. <laughs> Such a weight off my mind when those men appear from, with the ambulance. It's just so much responsibility when you're on your own. Go and sit down, Uncle. Josh and his parents are waiting for the results of his scans. They still don't know the full extent of his injuries. You definitely can't lift your legs up. Just try to push your foot up toward your nose. Try to gently lift the leg up. What stops you from doing that? I don't know. My muscles pulled or something. Can you move your legs at all? What can you feel? Can you do this? Can you do that? You're just waiting for any sensation at all. Try and relax. Try not to tense up, because you'll make the pain worse. Just relax. Because I've got so many health issues, I've got problems with my spine. So my spine's broken several times. I've got metal work in my spine. And now I have tumours all over the bones. I spent a, a long, 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 long time stuck in bed because I just basically couldn't do anything at all. And I've had to rely on the boys, and especially Josh when he was younger, to do a lot for me. And because I spend time in a wheelchair, I didn't want it for him. Not at 19. you dropped an ironing board on your foot. I mean, you perish thought that you'd fallen down the stairs, you know? Or maybe that would have been better. Liam! Oh, shall I come? I want to come. Yeah, come, come, come. Hang on. Hang on, let me hobble along. <laughs> Here she comes, hop along. <laughs> oh, it's got worse. Come with me. <laughs> oh. Can't go that fast. Oh. OK, so what happened? Well, we were out clubbing last night. Yeah. And some people came over and tried to steal our drinks. And we said How no. Dare they? I know. And then two girls jumped on me. 
Well, really? a man jumped on air. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've hurt my finger Lovely because of it. So can you bend it? Yeah. OK, and straighten. No? OK. Any pain in here? No. A little bit there. A little bit there. Yeah. OK. I'm going to send you for an X-ray, just have a look and see if there's any bone hey. involvement as well. OK. Pop your leg up. <laughs> oh, dear. Nice and bruised, isn't it? Yeah. OK. Can like you wiggle that. your toes? Yeah. Oh, that hurts, my big that toes. Hurts. I can, can you wiggle feel the me? others? Can you tell me if that hurts? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, yeah. OK. That's Thank you. <laughs> sign that we definitely need to x-ray you as well. All right, so have you got any medical conditions? I've been seeing a doctor and a few psychiatrists. Then they'll start me on HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. I'll have testosterone blockers and oestrogen pills. I will develop breasts and my hips will widen. My, the texture of my hair will change and skin to more softer and I will just look and feel a lot more womanly. Then the last step is surgery. They take away my penis and give me a vagina. <laughs> then, then it's irreversible. OK. All right. OK, so this is your foot. Absolutely normal. So no broken bones, obviously bruised. You need to be sitting with your foot out. Can I have crutches and bandage? Crutches and a bandage? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> right, Liam, let's have a look at you then. OK. So, no broken bones. Dead. But what I do suspect is a tendon injury, and it's something that we call a mallet finger. It means that the tendon straightens that tip of your finger has torn off the bone. All right. So what we need to do, we need to encourage it to reattach itself. And we do that by putting a special splint on that pushes the end of your little finger up so that the tendon can reattach. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to have to cut you now. Oh, no. Do you want to cut the nail yourself? No. No. <laughs> be too painful. Yeah, like South Army. Thank me. <laughs> OK. Sorry. That was hurting. I know. Bad news is that has to stay on there for six weeks. <gasps> six weeks? Oh my god. Mallet finger. We're gonna claim this for living allowance. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, life will be a lot easier for me to deal with, and I'll be able to look in the mirror and really enjoy what I see. Try and get the shoe on as soon as you can, all right? Okay. Wait for me. <sighs> he's a bit more with it now, but he's still quite zonked. The results of Josh's scans and x rays are back. Look, he's actually got away with nothing life threatening at all. And he's got those puncture wounds, but I think he's been lucky. Fantastic. Can you request an ASU bed under ortho for him, please? Your scans of your neck, your head and your neck are absolutely fine. You've got nothing to your chest and your belly, and your pelvis is fine as well. So lucky. It's just brilliant. Good news. The minimum they thought he would have had was a broken femur, and they thought he was going to have to go to surgery. And they'd done really in-depth scans on him. And then they came to us and they said, he hasn't got a single broken bone, not one broken bone. What the radiologist said is that you're ridiculously well built, and you've got a muscle called a psoas muscle it's in your belly. And he said you've got the biggest psoas muscles he's ever seen on scan. So you're obviously, whatever exercise you do, it's pretty good exercise. He like crazy. Uh, I think so. Do you think about luck? There's an element of luck and chance, you know, where you are crushed by something and you've come out and walked out of hospital quite quickly. That's lucky. That exercising paid off, mate. This mouth, I can't not have had exercise for what I am, I? <laughs> no, joke. probably not, no. Just look at your arms. Being a dad, I can understand now why certain things are frightening, especially for a parent. I'm always 
relaying my experiences of being a parent to to other parents because I think if you can reassure parents and say well this has happened to my daughter you know this is fine you know I'm talking from experience they're more likely to not just believe you as a doctor but like you as a doctor and makes my job a little bit easier. Why do you know what happened now can you remember? What happened? I was trying to see if it'd go under the bridge. What the boat? No yeah I couldn't get out of the way in time and it just crushed me. Frightened the bloody life out of us. We were very concerned about pelvic and femoral fractures, um, but actually he's not fractured anything at all. But he hasn't managed to pee for us yet. I mean, we're trying to get him to wee, but he hasn't weed yet. So, need a little trickle. Need to make sure you've got no blood in there and you haven't bashed your kidneys. You can do that for me. Just we turf mum out. Even if you have to have another drink, Josh, concentrate. You'll be all right, water. just a little trickle. I mean, with shortness of breath on exertion, HB is 5.6 on the gas. Has anybody mentioned to you about your blood test results? No. They show that you're very anemic. You're to the level where we need to replace the blood. We need to give you at least another two units, but probably more. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, I feel so rotten. I know. Let's get the blood transfusion going and then we can have a chat, all right? Stay with me just for a few minutes. Sure. You all right? Once they do this, you'll start to feel much better. She wanted to get into films, strangely enough as a hairdresser. So she was apprenticed as a hairdresser. I worked first of all for the Admiralty in acoustics, working on submarines and things. Uh, so we got married in 52, I think it was. A long while ago. I'm sorry to do this to you, John. It's all right? Not all right, is it? Your shoulder's cold. We'll put your arms in. Now. Most things we've done together, really. Like we did a bit of sailing, we've traveled around a bit, we've been to America, we've been to France a good few times. We get on very well together. Our senses of humor seem very similar. Are you feeling sick, No, just faint. Just faint. You wait outside, darling. You sure? OK. Sharp scratch coming. God, I hate those words. No, no. Sharp scratch coming. Sorry. Sorry, Gene, uh, do you squeeze my, my hand? Squeeze my hand. All finished, hopefully, OK? We're in, sorted. Right, we'll get this blood going now, OK? I feel it's as if the oncologists have got, like, a, a toolbox and they've got all the different tools out and tried them all. And we've worked our way through it now, really. So I suppose we've been fortunate in having the time that we've had. identified some flagrant inefficiencies. If 
I went to a hairdresser and they told me, right, your appointments are X time, but you're going to have to wait three hours. If this were our business, you know, we'd say clean the shop floor or take your hands out of your pockets. Like, do some juggling, entertain the people in the waiting room. <laughs> you know. The other thing they should do, they should have satisfaction. Um, you know, like, you go to McDonald's. You go to McDonald's and they have, you know, you can fill out a card. I am satisfied, I am dissatisfied. Because I would like to say <laughs> I am dissatisfied at this juncture. Can't pay you at the minute. It hasn't been able since you came in. Right. Although Josh has no broken bones, the doctors now have concerns about injuries to his penis. Can't do a wee for me, can you? I might want to. Not one at all. He's not as bad as they thought when he when he was first in the ambulance. They thought it was all life threatening and God knows what and oh. Okay. What you need to do next time you go for a wee, <sighs> we need to give you a bottle, OK? And if it's particularly sore when you wee, you need to let us know as well, cos you do have a lot of bruise in there. <sighs> You're giving it quite a whack, haven't you? Right. Oh, there's a bruise in there. <laughs> you feel all right? I'll get one of the urology specialists to come and have a look at you anyway. I'm sure there's nothing. Bruise my belly. Sorry. His bell end looks a bit bruised. Oh, oh baby. Oh. Yes, I will. It looks like when you have a vasectomy. Probably about the covers. Obviously, it was incredibly bruised. Although you laugh and giggle with them as well, in the back of your mind you're thinking, you know, it might not be funny in the long run because it could be something serious. He's only 19, he's probably going to want a family and things like that. His pelvic area and his groin was literally at the actual junction, the, the, the point that he was hit. They thought that it was actually broken and that he may need surgery. Can we give Josh a urine pot? Because urology are going to see him, so we need to make sure there's no blood and stuff in this wee. It's just useful to know before the urology doctor comes down that there isn't any blood in your urine and that you can pee because we get more worried if there is blood and we get more worried if you couldn't pee. I was collapsing my ironing board yesterday and I dropped it on the top of my foot. If it was just pain where I dropped it, I would have just... I wouldn't have been worried about it. I would have just thought, oh, it's just a bruise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you change him? Yeah. There? Yeah. yeah where have you been? There. There's no signs of any fractures. OK. Um, cool. So I think it's most likely just been bruised. OK. Um, if you're still getting any problems, um, I would go to see your GP. If the pain gets worse, and then come back in. Okay. Cool. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Just a bad bruise. That's what he says. So what was that? Two hours to be told that nothing was wrong. Yeah. Good lord. Let's get some lunch. Yeah. I might just have to go straight to my coach. <sighs> After three hours in recess, Jean is receiving the first of two pints of blood. We had the doctor come to see her on Friday, and he said if she doesn't eat, she will just fade away, and she's not eating. Whatever I make for her, she dibble dabbles about with it and then leaves most of it. It's difficult, I mean, we've been married a long, long time, you know, and it's been a conventional marriage with me doing all the, the cooking, etc., and shopping, and he doesn't really know how to cook. And all these trying tremendously hard, but it's not always a success, is it, John? 
What? My cooking? Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't come easily to you. You've never done the cooking, have you? No. But that's not to say that I can't manage to do it. Who gives you the Klexane injections? Me. You do. Which is why... You're very good. You're everything, aren't you? <laughs> Nurse, the chef. Deserves a medal. Yeah. Right. We're very happy where we are. We've got a nice house. We can do what we like, and, and which is great. We're very happy as we are. And we've done most things that we wanted to do in life, really. We do need you at PU, though. We need you to do a wee. Do you think you could go a little bit? No, no. <laughs> He's taken a lot of injury to his groin, so his penis and his balls and everything. And, um, yeah, no, really bad. You should see the state of it, really bad. Oh, it makes me want to wee every time you put it in there. No? <laughs> Don't think about it too much. I think running water. Trickle, 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 trickle. It's a bit of a taboo type thing, but you know, for guys, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's that uh, you can't sort of, uh, you don't want to damage it. I want to, but I can't do it. Right? Every bloke is going to, if they see it or hear about it, they're going to think, oh, yeah, my crown jewels, I've got to protect those. I hope that doesn't happen to me. when there's bruising to the penis like this, you have two chambers either side which have like a fibrous coat and when you get an erection that fills with blood. What we worry about is, is there a little tear in one of those fibrous chambers? If there is a tear, the main problem is, is that in the future where if it's, when it heals and scars, it, it can cause the, the penis to bend. It's not as serious as a spinal injury. You know, if, if I was to pick the two, then I would say I'd rather have a penile fracture, because they can heal, and you can still use it. The history sort of how things happen doesn't fit with there being a tear. We're treating this conservatively. With, you know, we don't think this is a penile fracture, so there shouldn't be any problems with the erection, and there shouldn't be any deformity or you know deviation of the, the erection when you when you get one. All right. Cool. Cheers. Man. So relieved. We don't need to be living in each other's pockets to know we all love and care about each other. Do us a favour. We take my trauma patient up to ASU. Oh, we all know that about each other. The last thing we needed was an accident to prove it. She was glad you wanted to see her. Say thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. In some ways, it's a nice thing that they don't hurry about it, any of it, do it's they? It's a very nice department here. Yeah. I mean, there's no sort of rush to get you seen to and out. I've had a lot of treatment in these few hours. <coughs> Different, in fact. Mm -hmm.
blaring trumpet, but I think I make a very passable looking woman because no, no one comes up to me and goes, oh, are you a man? I get boys coming up to me, you know, asking for my phone number. I think about the future, but like all of us, we're all a bit susceptible to things that might happen. I mean, you might be 20 and go on a tube t train and be blown up, you know. You can't think much about the future. And anyway, at 80, you know, you've not got umpteen years to go anyway. So the thing is to make the best of it all, which is what I try to do. Hems red phone, 10 minutes. Hems red phone, 10 minutes. So we've got a 16 year old, fall from height. Second floor balcony. Whitney Houston's dead. Shame, in it? I can't believe Whitney Houston's dead. I love Whitney Houston. Oh my God. I didn't want to scare her by saying, like, seriously, like, she's not well. She didn't realise how sick she was, but I did. 